CinemaCon has brought us tons of new looks and news from upcoming films, including Captain America Brave New World, Gladiator 2, and also Amazon Prime drops one of their most successful shows yet, Fallout. Let's get into this week's movie news. What is up, movie friends? Welcome back to Raiders of the Lost Podcast, the ultimate film and TV podcast. There is so much to go over this week, but first, let's talk about the box office and leading the pack this weekend. For the first time ever, A24 has topped the box office with their biggest hit for an opening weekend, yet Civil War debuted with $26 million and a record for A24. Is that a domestic total too? Domestic total. Wow, it's really that's a big hit for them because this movie only has a budget of fifty million dollars. It's the biggest budget, biggest production that A twenty four has ever worked with on a film. And obviously, they needed to probably hit about one fifty to become profitable after profit splits with movie theaters and factoring in marketing. But it's on its way, and that's a huge hit because there's so many bangers in theaters still right now. Yeah, that's a great start. This is looking like with that kind of opening weekend, if it holds strong for another two weeks, it could close in on about $200 million with other films, other war films which have opened with about that much have hit up $200 million. It's a perfectly timely release because it's post-Dune Part 2, it's post-Ghostbusters, post-Monkey Man, Godzilla X Kong is the empires. Slowing, it's slowing down a little bit. So it's actually a, a really good date to release that film on. So I think there was a really smart decision to go for this past weekend in April. So congrats to A24 for finally topping the opening weekend of a box office. It's a big deal. People do it again. Yeah, yeah, it's massive, massive news for A24. Second place, Godzilla X Kong, the new empire with another $15 million to keep padding their stats at the domestic box office. Ghostbusters, the frozen empire, back-to-back -back empires here. A 4.6 million <laughs> third weekend in the domestic box office. Civil War should have been called Civil War the New Empire. <laughs> <laughs> Monkey Man, another solid day, uh, another solid weekend. 4.5 million at the global uh, domestic box office. Closing in on good, 20. Good news for that. Even though it was a budget of about 30 million dollars, it was paid for by Netflix. So I'm, I'm sure it will. They're in the green. Hit that green. They, they well, only, technically it's green. Yeah, Universal spent 10 mil on it. Okay, so Universal's in the, green, in the green already. Good investment. Kung Fu Panda 4 made 4.4 million domestically. Dune Part 2 pulled another 4 million domestic. The First Omen 2.5 million. The Long Game 1.5 million. Sting 1.5 million. <laughs> the new horror film from Oh, is the that's the Spider the film. The Spider, the giant 1. spider. 1.2 million. That's its opening weekend. Yeah, it debuted in 1300 theaters, so it's a Good number of theaters, so it's just not a hit. Yeah, not a hit, and who knows? It might have good legs. Spiders aren't hot right now. Might have. They're not hot right might now. Might have good. Get it? It's a joke about legs. Oh, I, spiders that was, that was legs. good, man. That was good. And then Arthur the King added another one million dollars domestically to its box office total. So all kinds of films to see in theaters right now: action, war epics, monsters, ghosts, kung fu, martial arts, animated. <laughs> Dune Part 2 Horror. It's crazy. There's every kind of movie in theaters Dogs. right now. Dogs. There's a dog movie in there right a dog now. Movie. A fucking spider movie, spider a dog movie. Yeah. It's crazy how many kinds of movies in theaters right now. No cat movie, though. Yeah, where's the cat's movie? No, there's no cat movie. We deserve better. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Are you a cat? No, well, we're cat dads. Are you? But it sounds like you're a cat. Meow. <laughs> All right, let's, <laughs> oh get, let's get into it. Anthony is officially a cat. CinemaCon dropped so much. Incredible news. We didn't see any of this footage, but the audiences there did get to see footage from a bunch of upcoming releases for this year and also for 2025. The first thing we'll get into is Captain America Brave New World. We got some new images from the film, official stills, and I gotta say, thank fucking God they fixed Mackie's suit because that Captain America suit from at the end of the TV show... With that white, didn't, it was not working. I was not a fan of it. It was not working. It did not, I don't know, it just didn't come up. It looked, it, it, it was looked, too much. Yeah, it was, it was way too much. I like the new design. It's sleeker, you know, it, it's just less in your face with the costume. The costume was too distracting in that show. Yeah. I mean, but I think this is a really interesting film movie. I mean, we all know that it went through extensive reshoots, and I think it's reshooting right now. They're approaching May. it like a... They're trying to make it like Captain America 2. Yeah. So they're reshooting this whole, a lot of this movie from rumors. I believe they're going into pre um, production on reshoots right now. They're or, doing it currently. Yeah, currently, right like now. Like right April, now. April and May. As, as I live and breathe right now. But we here. did get some stills from the film, including our first look at Harrison Ford in the picture, as well as Anthony Mackie in his uniform, like Anthony said. Uh, teaser trailers, 
which I'm sure we'll be getting soon. But at CinemaCon was said he is Anthony Mackie gets attacked at the White House as well as some other stuff happens. But mm-hmm. I'm very curious to see the trailer for this movie because this is going to be an integral part of the MCU going forward. This is the new Captain America. And this is the brave new world, everybody. Brave new world. So they got to land this movie. They got to hit big with this film. It's got to be good because people are losing their faith in the MCU. And the title change as well it used to be called New World Order. So now it's Brave New World. Yeah, New World Order is kind of it's, it's, it's kind of dark. Yeah, it's like what is what exactly is going on? And so I think I would I honestly want to see what the original film was. I want to see that. I kind of want I'm to curious. see. I'm curious. <laughs> Cuz the new direction apparently is Winter Soldier vibes. With the action, I mean, with the tone. I they should have started that with the beginning. I don't know why they didn't do that at first. We could be watching it They're this summer. They're also dropping the ball by not having Bucky in it. Massive, massive L. Big L. Something that's not an L, though, is another major upcoming release from 2024. Debuted footage at CinemaCon. And I'm talking about Gladiator 2. Let's and go! They had this huge presentation of a chariot in Roman soldiers and chariots and horses bringing coming out on stage for the actual trailer. That's amazing. It's so cool. Now, this sounds epic. We got a sizzle reel. We didn't get to see it, obviously, but people who were in attendance saw it. And apparently, Paul Meskel fights a rhinoceros in the arena at what? one point. And this will be in the trailer, I'm sure. Yes, and also, there were shots of bloodied and beaten Pedro Pascal and Paul Meskel facing off in the arena as well. Yeah, I wonder if they'll be the main uh, opposing forces in this film. Mm-hmm. It seems like it. Could be. I, 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 my guess, I'm just guess. I mean, we have the Emperor, who's that guy who replaced Barry Keoghan, so mm-hmm. he'll be the Emperor. Denzel, my guess, will be a gladiator trainer. And then Pedro Pascal could be like the... Rome's most famous gladiator who were like celebrities of their day it's possible that's my guess it's possible I feel like Pedro will be more of a political leader or general possibly of an army mm-hmm. I think that's the route to go a person of power yeah that's a good that's a good approach versus gladiator because not only politicians had power in ancient Rome generals had massive amounts of power in oh, yeah. ancient Rome or if you were very wealthy you could become a general you could basically have an army you could pay for people to be soldiers for you. So yeah. I think he's going to be a person of immense power versus another power. gladiator. But I like that theory about another gladiator. It's not a bad idea, dude. But again, this is something we didn't... We got the Tigers in Gladiator, but Maximus didn't necessarily fight them. So it will be insane to actually see a gladiator battling a giant animal. It seems... I wonder if then they'll approach it. We'll see more than combat in the arena because we all, we've we done episodes on gladiator and we talked about how the Colosseum was used not just for gladiator fights but also executions in a common way to execute people or prisoners and criminals in ancient Rome in the Colosseum was with animals. Mm-hmm. You would be tied up to a piece of wood and a bear would tear you apart or you'd just go up against a oh. tiger or go up against a lion be 20 prisoners versus a bunch of animals. That was very common. More animals died in the Colosseum than humans. So we'll see. Aww. Maybe it'll be a little bit of that. And, I mean, Aww. naval battles as well. <laughs> yeah, naval battles. Well, yeah, the Armada battles, it's it's believed that happened there as well for sure. But but there's, I think, there's disputes between yeah. that. But I think it could work because Ridley Scott with modern technology can do a lot more than he was able to do back then. Although he did make those some of those tiger shots look incredible, the ones that were CGI, most of that was real, but... There were a couple of shots that looked very good for the time, but he has so much more freedom to work with his paintbrush now. All right, cool. I cannot wait. This is probably our most anticipated film for the rest of the year. For me, yes. I can't think of anything else that I'm more hyped for. It would have been Mickey 17, but that got pushed to 2025. 2029. February. (laughs) I hope to God not. (laughs) Hope not. But Bong Joon-ho and Pattinson were actually in attendance at CinemaCon. Oh, I might as well talk about Mickey 17. To present Mickey 17. Yeah, yeah. so uh, we'll probably get a trailer very soon when we'll get all the information if you haven't look this up at all we've talked about it briefly in the past we've both read the book it's a terrific novel it's called mickey seven instead of mickey 17 and basically pattinson will play this character who's an expendable on this uh distant future humanity where they're basically colonizing the galaxy and he's an expendable meaning he's a person who works and does grunt work for their crew for the colonized for the for, for the colony, yes. but he's expendable and he can die over and over and over again. So basically, he gets cloned over and over again. That's not a, a spoiler. spoiler. That's the plot of the movie. It's, it's, in, the the bo- book. it's in the book synopsis. It's a two-line synopsis. And also, yeah. Bong Joon-ho brought up how he changed the title from Mickey 7 to Mickey 17 because he killed him 10 different ways instead. Mm-hmm. Because in the book, it happens a little differently. 
I won't spoil it in case you want to read the book. Can't recommend it enough. But I I think it was a great decision to add more deaths to make it Mickey 17. I think was very clever by Bong Joon-ho. Add a lot more comedy because it's a very funny book. Yeah, they both uh, did a little press in some interviews about the film. And Pattinson had some really insightful things to say. about his, And also why he signed on to the project with the characters. So I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be a great fun movie with some really cool things to say. Plus it's Bong Joon-ho. Yeah. He hasn't made a movie in a little while. This was this a little is, while. This, this is yeah. big film post Parasite. I mean, six years. We've got a microscope on this guy. Six Finally, years. He's got a movie coming out. But I mean, sure, from the delay of this film, he's already deep into his next project. Probably they had all the production delays yeah. and everything like Absolutely. that. Absolutely, because it was supposed to come out already. Yeah, it would have been out a month ago. Oh March, man, it's too March twenty twenty four was supposed to come out. We'll get it eventually. One eventually. day. Eventually, cannot <laughs> wait. All right, let's get into some more news. How about a new Edgar Wright movie? Finally, finally, Edgar Wright's making a new film. Well, he just made one four or five years ago. Well, how long ago was that 16 one? 16 years ago. 16 he made last ago. night in Soho. <laughs> <laughs> that was I can't years. tell. If it, was it pre-COVID or post-COVID? That was, was post-COVID. That was, actually, that was right after COVID. That's how I gauge when a movie came out. 2021, oh. 2022, okay. something like that. Well, he's going to make a re-adaptation of a movie that's been based off a book before. So The Running Man, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie that came out in 19... 19- 87 something like that something like that yeah based off the Stephen King novel of the same name The Running Man Paul Verhoeven made it Edgar Wright's going to make a new version of The Running Man it's not going to be a remake of the movie it's just going to be a new interpretation new adaptation of the novel and Glenn Powell is set to star and I think that's a great combo Glenn Powell is killing it right now because he obviously has twisters coming out twisters he's on fire now the novel is set in a dystopian United States during the year 2025. Mm, I bet it comes out next timing. year. Perfect timing. In which the nation's economy is in ruins and world violence is rising. The story follows protagonist Ben Richards as he participates in the reality TV show The Running Man, in which contestants win money by evading a team of hitmen, hitmen sent to kill them. It's going to be a lot of fun. Sounds I think it's a great pairing. Perfect for Edgar Wright. Perfect. And for Glenn Powell. And I don't even care if people are upset about this being a remake. I am all for it. Edgar Wright, it's a a new adaptation, not a remake. Yeah, and also, I mean, the the original film, it's not like it's a widely beloved film. I'm sure the majority of people listening to this podcast maybe haven't even seen it. It's awesome, but it is one of the more obscure sci-fi films. Like, if you're going to talk about Schwarzenegger and sci-fi, you talk about Predator and Total Recall, not The Running Man. You know, this one's not really up on that caliber. No, not, not really. Yeah. It's cool. It had that weird sort of 80s, 90s futuristic feel to it. A lot of the movies kind of had that same atmo, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah, same kind of sure. atmosphere and for feel, sure. costume design. Um, the Sylvester Stallone one with Wesley Snipes is called Demolition, Demolition Man. Demolition Man kind of feels like Running Man 2 in a way. He so doesn't know how to use the three seashells. The three seashells. <laughs> <laughs> seashells. 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 Yes. Moving on. Two. Moving some new. You want me to take this <laughs> go one? Go ahead. Are you okay? Did you have an aneurysm? No, because it's your turn. You just, go for it. Go you for didn't it. say anything. Go you didn't for say it. a goddamn thing. I was waiting okay. for you. Amazon just dropped a new TV sh- series, which is an absolute hit right now for them. Fallout, based off the video games, which I've never played. However, a lot of people are recommending the show to us. They're saying it's very faithful to the games. It's got that cool, weird tone that the games have. Great action, great stunt work, and just solid acting. Walton Goggins is one of the leads in this, and he's one of our favorite, like, supporting kind of character type actor piece uh, guys out there. And I'm very curious about the show. I'll give it a shot. I think that Amazon's usually hit or miss, but it seems like they got a hit right now because the critical and fan response is off the charts for them, and people are loving it. Jonathan Nolan. Show runs it. Yeah, Jonathan Nolan knows what he's doing. He did an amazing job of Westworld, and... He had um, that great show on TV, The uh, Criminal Minds. Or not Criminal Minds, sorry. It's something I can't remember. Point of interest. Person of interest. Got it. One of them. There you go. You got it. Wrote The Dark Knight. Wrote Interstellar. Co-wrote them. And I mean, he's just a a super talented guy. He knows what he's doing. So uh, in the Nolans, we trust. So I'm not surprised. In the Nolans, we trust. I'm not surprised it's good because he's fucking awesome. He's great at making TV shows too. Yeah, he made the other TV show for Amazon Prime as well. The science fiction one starring Chloe Grace Moretz. Which is called... Oh, The Peripheral. The Peripheral. He show runs that as well. The, his shows always look so good. Yeah. They always look stunning. All right, moving on to Margot Robbie. Now, last week we said she did. She got her sights on The Sims, and she's in production producing a Sims movie. Well, guess what? She's got the Barbie dolls. She's got the video game. 
She wants a board game now. Let's go. Margot Robbie has signed on as the producer for Monopoly. She will be producing the live action adaptation of the beloved, hated board game that tears families and friends apart. She'll probably act in both of these two, I'm sure. Maybe, yeah. Maybe not The Sims, but Monopoly, I bet she's the lead. Maybe. because she, She's would be, playing the guy with the mustache. <laughs> the, in the monocle. <laughs> because The Sims, if she if she starred in The Sims, it'd be too much like Barbie. But Monopoly, I think that she'd be fine as the lead. Monopoly would require an ensemble, for sure. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I feel like she, she'll she so, probably yeah. be in both. Yeah. But Margot is just taking advantage of our childhood and her childhood, I'm sure, and just gonna make bank off these movies. Next week, we're, she's gonna be producing the Uno card game live-action adaptation. This is so smart. Yeah. This is an excellent business decision. She's just gonna set herself up. She already has generational wealth, but for immense success with these two films. Yeah. Producing them. Man, she's gonna make. Bank. I think everybody will be very curious about Monopoly. Very Me too. Curious. I guess. Yeah. I, I wonder how they do it because they must have a good idea. You can relate it to the world in a, in a, in a good way, like a real estate comedy. Uh, in talk about um, corporate greed, all sorts of, like yeah. deregulation, all sorts of things. It depends on how serious they want to make it. Yeah. Or just make it fun and make it like the board game as much as possible. It's a pro- it's a family friendly property, so you got to keep it light. Yeah, so For sure. that's what I mean. Yeah. I don't want to go too dark with it. Speaking of dark, though, I'm not sure if you heard this, but there's a new live-action adaptation of the Ninja Turtles property that was just announced by uh, Hamada, the uh, head of production at Warner Brothers. They're going to make Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Last Ronin, into a film live-action, and it's going to be rated R. Dude. Walter Hamada, the head of Warner Brothers, just announced it. Thank you. Finally, a rated R Ninja Turtles movie. That's really what they need. That means we're going to see some sick shit. That's all we want. Do you want the turtles to be practical or CGI? Practical, baby. But you know they're not going to do that. They better be fucking practical. They're not going to do it. No. No, 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 no. I think that they've learned the mistakes. They did the CGI with Michael Bay twice. He didn't direct them, but he produced them. Didn't quite work. I think that they got to go pra- practical, man. You can see you could do some CGI effects on the faces for sure to make the faces work a little better. But I'm saying like if they get live action Ninja Turtles, that will get people really excited. I think what they're gonna do is make do mocap. I think they're gonna do mocap again with really great CGI, but make the CGI look like practical suits. If that makes sense, that's what I sure. would do. Sort of like Godzilla minus one. Godzilla minus one, the CGI for Godzilla is so terrific because it looks like a guy in a suit. That's why I loved it so much. I think if they do that, take that approach, do mocap because, you know, when you're doing a Ninja Turtles movie, you really need, I think, incredible athletes. You have to have remarkable athletes. And in order for them to do their thing, to do incredible aerobatics, incredible fight choreo, they got to do a mocap. I don't think there's any other way around it. I would love for it to be practical, but you can't be doing front flips and, and really cool spinning kicks or, or whatever. Rex, awesome. With a giant shell fight. on. Yeah, you can't do that with a yeah. shell on. You can do some stuff, but you're limited. I have an alternative. What? Puppets. <laughs> <laughs> I have another alternative. <clears throat> Train real turtles to fight. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a miniature set let's just see what happens let's see what happens baby just throw a couple swords in there a couple snapping tortoises yeah but you know what i mean yeah so the, yeah, yeah. there's no way it's not going to be cgi yeah, but no, i yeah, think yeah. if they take the approach of godzilla minus one make them look like practical suits to an extent i think it could be a lot of fun i think it could really work and the only the, what's got me excited for this is that they're confirming that it's going to be rated r that's huge. That's awesome. That's really big. Let's go. That's massive for fans. What else will probably be rated R is Damien Giselle's next film. We'll see. But it's going to be set in a prison. So I'm assuming it'll probably be a, like a dark drama. I bet it will be. It'll so be, there's it'll no, be interesting because no, there's going to be no trumpets in this. <laughs> he'll get a trumpet in there. He'll get, he'll he'll get, get a some, trumpet in there. Don't worry. Jazz in there somehow. He'll, get, he'll get a trumpet there, in there. There ain't going to be no trumpets in this movie, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be a trumpet, don't Unless worry. Unless it's like a jazz band set in a prison, <laughs> which I doubt. It. I feel like he's gonna move because he, obviously he made First Man, so he's. I think it's yeah. There's no it's trumpet. Not like he's in never. First man. It's not like he's never moved away from music before. But I love First Man so much, and that has nothing to do with music. It's got great music in it. You know what I mean? So even though he's a very musical filmmaker, it's part of his DNA when it comes to storytelling. And his three of his major movies are 
the main, main many of the plots have music in them or many big sequences of, of bands. But I think that this is going to be awesome, probably. I think it'll be a great bounce back for Babylon, which is a controversial, well, not controversial, but a divisive film amongst movie people, big time. Big time. It's a hate or love it kind of movie. And I think that Damien Giselle going to do a prison film sounds awesome because I love prison movies. He really did. Do. He he did um, recently write a musical that he sold. And uh, someone, uh, other filmmakers are making it. Oh, no shit. Yeah. A, a couple, I think a high profile filmmaker is making his musical that he wrote recently. There's no news on what exactly the film is. I have a guess of what it might be. And I'm guessing if it's an adaptation of something, if it's an adaptation, my prediction is that it'll be based on the French film Les True, which is the best prison film ever made. It's 60 years old. I think that would be, be interesting to see him do a remake of that. Um, if you haven't seen that film, check it out. Well, yeah, because he got tapped to write and direct, so it, maybe it's not an original screenplay of his. Maybe it's going to be an adapted. We'll see. We shall see. We'll see. Let's talk about something very cool. We all know that Cavill, Henry Cavill, got tapped to play the lead in the new Highlander film Chad Stahelski is going to be making, and he confirmed that he's already started training for this film. And to quote Henry Cavill, if you think you've seen me do sword work before... You haven't seen me do anything yet. Ooh. Cannot wait because he did some great sword work inside the first couple seasons, I would say, of The Witcher. He does great sword work in it. Yeah, but it's, I mean, yeah. I know it's good, but like obviously that show just put him in the back seat. Yeah, yeah. So it was limited. But like him with a massive sword just fits. Mm. Henry Cavill with a massive Ford is awesome. A Plus, Ford truck? <laughs> what did I say? Ford. A massive. <laughs> Henry Cavill with the Ford F-350. Built, built Ford <laughs> built, Tough. I'm Henry Cavill and I'm built Ford Tough. Yes, sir. Go Chiefs. I, I like my, my truck bed. I, I like to put my big ass sword in my Ford. And I go watch the Chiefs games because he's a Chiefs fan. I'm a Chiefs fan. I'm Henry Cavill. Oh, my... it's because of Kansas. Yeah. Kansas. Yeah. He became a Chiefs fan because of uh, playing Superman. True. True kid. Fact. Just happened to be the most you know, successful team in the last seven years, too. Good for him. He picked a good team. Bill Ford tough. <laughs> anyway, so I'm very excited to see Chad Stahelski doing a fucking period piece. Yeah. This is going to be epic. Yeah, I can't wait. And I, I'm sure it's good. I'm sure he's been itching to do something different. Mm -hmm. It's been 10 years of John Wick, so I'm sure he's just been, like, craving a new kind of story device to, good point. to work on. Yeah. All right, next up, we got a great trailer from an adaptation of a Danish film that came out a couple years ago. They, they turned this out quickly. So this is a horror film called Speak No Evil. Really cool Danish horror film. It's like a small, in scope, family horror um, about this couple and their, and their daughter who are traveling. And they encounter another family, a couple their age with a son the same age as their daughter. And then they invite the, this other family to, oh, stay with us at our house for a few days. We'll have a nice time. Yeah, they hit it off. For, they hit, yeah. yeah, they hit it off. And then things get pretty fucked up. The father of the weird family is James McAvoy, and he looks freaking awesome in this movie. Yeah, and Mackenzie Davis and Scoot McNary co-star, two fantastic actors. And I, I'm going to hold my breath because I know that the Danish film just came out, and horror remakes are generally middled, muddled, but this looks good. This looks like a good trailer, and yeah. McAvoy looks like he's having an absolute blast. He fits horror so well yeah. in the right kinds of roles. Man, he looks terrifying in this movie, and man, he looks massive. He looks too. big. He yeah. looks. He's, he's got. He got big, bro. He's fucking yoked in this movie. Ever since uh, Split. Yeah, man, dude, he's, he's just he, fucking massive. He, get, he got that gym bug, man. Yeah, man. It's, once you get it, you just can't. Get I rid always of thought it. he was more of a Streisand, but he's really rocking the shit in this one. <laughs> but whatever, I, I'm a simple man. If I see James McAvoy in a movie, I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, that, that's just that's just it. He's, he's one of my favorite awesome. actors. He's fucking awesome. He's one of my favorites. He's so likable on screen, even as a baddie. Uh, there's something about him. He's just he's got it, and I think a lot of people are drawn to him in his performances. He's just a really talented guy. He's unbelievably talented, incredible, incredible at talent. It's those blue eyes too. He can he can do, he can do anything. He can do anything. You can do anything, James. <laughs> Not you, James. James McAvoy. I'm talking to you. Oh, thanks. You're a great guy. So last year, I made a prediction. <laughs> do you remember what this prediction was? Oh yeah, I remember. Do you want to tell the, the listeners what my prediction was? You predicted that. There would be an IMAX re-release of Interstellar for its 10-year anniversary. And guess what's happening this year? Interstellar is being released in IMAX for its 10-year anniversary. I'm a genius! They listen to our show! IMAX and 70mm screens will be playing Interstellar this fall, and they're going to make fucking $20 million. Everyone's Easy. excited for this. They're going to make $20 million, oh, yeah. I guarantee it. Yeah. 
It's going to be... Everyone's been asking for it. I this is something that. everyone's been asking for. This absolutely this is. This is something everyone's been asking so for. So if you never got a chance to see Interstellar in theaters, and especially for people who are maybe so-so in the movie, I know some people that they like it, but they, they don't love it like as much as a ma- of the majority of the fan base does. How dare they? Experiencing it, 70 mil in IMAX yeah. is going to change your opinion on that movie. Also, the Spider-Man films are releasing in theaters next week. Oh, that's coming up. Yeah, next week. And then week. Aliens on the 26th. Alien Day. 26th is that really a day it's called alien day that's the year that's the day that came out april 26th it's yeah it's every year it's alien day nice yeah that's cool fun fact for today all right next up we have an update on speaking of horror the upcoming wolfman adaptation and it's exactly what i wanted it's going to be very small in scope lee wandle directing the film announced that the story is follows a family stuck in a house in the middle of a forest where danger may lurk closer than some of them realize. Keep it small. Don't make it too big of a fucking scope and get overwhelmed with story. Tight, horrific, taut thriller. That's what we want. That's why Invisible Man works so well. Yes. And he made Invisible Man and it works so well because the scope is small. It's not yeah. overarching over an... In- he's not tr- sabotaging an entire city and taking people out all over the place. It's nothing yeah. massive. It's just the small story of this woman and this man. Yes. That's it. Keep it Keep small. It small. Keep it Keep simple. Keep it simple. Keep it sexy. Keep you sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of sexy, <laughs> we got an update. Very sexy. On Ryan Gosling's <laughs> upcoming film in 2026, Project Hail Mary, which he signed on to recently. This is going to be directed by Phil Lord and Chris Miller. And it's called Project Hail Mary. That's what it's called. Yeah. Project Hail Mary. Yeah. That's what I said. No, I'm saying in case someone was confused that the project is called Hail Mary. You know, you it's know called I mean? Project Hail Mary. Title. Title. Three words, starting with Project, ending with Mary. Thank you. The film follows a man who wakes up from a coma afflicted with amnesia and soon remembers he was sent 12 year, light years away from Earth to save humanity. So Ryan Gosling is getting in a spacesuit. Didn't I have something to do? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Why am I Why am I in space right now? I bet that happens. He's probably like, why the fuck am I in space? <laughs> Did I even, like, forget something? No, wait, but there's no mission report. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be explained. Yeah, it'll be explained. I'm sure he wouldn't sign on if there were loose ends like that in it. <laughs> yeah, there's probably... <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it's very smart. There's probably like a mission failure. Yeah, and he's got all his. These guys, around. all three of these guys, can do any project they want, basically. Yes, so but it must you know, be good. That's Gosling setting. That won't come out till 2026, though, unfortunately. Cool. But we're gonna get that Gosling fix in three weeks with the Fall guy. So stay tuned. May fifth, third. May third. Fuck yeah. Five Nights at Freddy's has confirmed a sequel. Yay. It's gonna be called, believe it or not. <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's 2. What? <laughs> That's it. I did not see that coming. They could have a little more fun with the I'm title than that. I'm so surprised it's not Five Nights at Freddy's The New Empire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This will release in fall 2025. And I'm sure it'll make a boatload of money. The other one did a lot. You know what horror movie I loved in 2022? Yeah, I, I remember because you wouldn't shut up about it. Smile. And Smile 2 just got an update. What's the update? <laughs> you can tell us. Oh, he's smiling. He's smiling. Ooh, that is kind of creepy. <laughs> he's shaking. Okay, so smile. So two. smile too. <laughs> we'll you follow. Like we're hosting a podcast. Smile too. They like it. They're laughing. Everyone's laughing at me. Don't make it weird. Smile too will follow a pop star and how the curse spreads amongst her fans. Very getting, excited about that. Getting very big. I really fucking liked Smile. It's good. S- sign me up. It's good. I liked it way more than you like it. I thought it was good. I just didn't think it was amazing. I thought it was excellent. Excellent horror film. How do you th- speaking? We were just talking about how we're excited for Wolfman being small. It sm- sounds like Smile is getting very big. What do you think about that? I like it because it's small in the first time. Yeah, that's true. It was small. Yeah, it's small. Pretty small. What are you gonna do with your horror? Gonna expand a little bit. Huh. The sequel's got to get bigger, better, They're better, taking out better. all the Swifties in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's their target. <laughs> A Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, next up. We're still on horror over here. Trap. This is M. Night Shyamalan's next film with Josh Hartnett, and some details have been revealed. 
Josh Hart is playing the lead. And it's an interesting concept. He's always got cool concepts. So Trap follows a concert that is being used by police to catch a serial killer. Josh Hartnett would be playing the serial killer. So they it seems like they've lured him to this concert to try and catch him in the act of maybe trying to kill a girl or something. Except what will be the twist? I'm sure there's a twist somewhere. Except it's the lead singer. Taylor Swift is the serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> M. Night Shyamalan is the serial killer. That's the twist. All right, moving on. You can't do the smile again. This is an audio episode. People need to listen to this. They can't hear you smile. <laughs> your face Your face is going to hurt after this. That's not. All right, speaking of horror, still on it. Transform. I mean, sorry. <laughs> not Transformers. Transformers is horror now, baby. Let's I mean, that would be pretty sick. It's a ghost story. <laughs> Alien Romulus. <laughs> Alien Romulus showed... Two clips at CinemaCon, and they included pra- practical face huggers and a chestburster scene. Very cool. I don't want to see this. I want to wait for the film to see this. Yeah, me too. I, I mean, we already got the teaser. I feel like when the, the trailers, trailers come enough. out, I don't want to watch the trailers. Unless we're at the theater, then there's really nothing you can do. Sometimes I do close my ears and eyes. Well, I'll you cover close my- your ears? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, like this. Like a door. Like a door hinge. <laughs> I close my ears. <laughs> Holy shit. Cover my ears. Close my eyes. I've never seen you cover your ears before. In a theater? Yeah. I've done that literally 20 times. I don't know what you're talking about. I've literally done that 20 times. You don't know my fucking life, bro. <laughs> you don't think I've ever closed my eyes and, and covered my ears in a movie theater before? <laughs> you've covered, you've closed your eyes before. I've done, Well, you have to you have to cover your ears, otherwise you're going to... you got to close your ears, man. you got to close your ears, otherwise you'll hear the scenes. I don't want to hear the scenes. I, used to, I did it for the original Dune trailers. I was doing that. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I was like... <laughs> Hey, man. Didn't spoil a thing. Didn't spoil anything. <laughs> I'm glad I did it, too. I'm really glad. I think that Alien Romulus had a perfect trailer, and it doesn't. they don't need to do another one. They will do another one, but... Well, they have to. Yeah. It's a fucking movie. But it's a, it's a perfect trailer, what they released a couple weeks just ago. just a teaser. That's all we need. That's all we need. No, I mean, you have to market the movie. They do have to market it. You're right. They have to market it. Not everyone's like you. I didn't say everyone was like me. You you said everyone should be happy. <laughs> what did I say? You said, I said, hold on. I said Ellie Romulus released a perfect trailer, and you said not everyone is you. No, no. You think it's a perfect teaser. <laughs> everyone loves it. No, it's great. But they Everyone's need, saying that. They have to release more. <laughs> I know they do. So this is how this is how movies get discovered. You know, they spread the word with trailers. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm going to punch it's you really in the popular. face. You can find them on the web. Do we have a face hugger in here? <laughs> All right, there's some Deadpool. Wolverine. No, no, no. You you're skipping. So you skipping. I have. I came up with one that's not on the list. Just let me just let me say it. Deadpool and Wolverine news an announcement. Cool. So, <laughs> Sean Levy, the director, actually teased that they created a very special popcorn bucket that is be- <laughs> is better than. It's apparently better than the Dune Part Two popcorn bucket. Oh my god! They said that it's it's. They said it's absolute absolutely genius. I can't wait to fucking see that. It's, yeah. Oh, I don't even want to guess what it is. I I saw recently that I can't remember. I think it was one of the executives at AMC of the marketing team was interviewed about the Dune popcorn bucket, and they said they were incredibly disappointed that their their popcorn bucket got turned into this sort of memification, this sex joke. I told you it was an accident. But at the same time, it's like, what are you upset about? You sold million. You probably sold not millions. You probably sold. Tens of thousands of those that you weren't going to sell. And that got people interested in the movie. There's no way they were going to clean out. There's no those. such thing as bad press. Exactly, but but they're they're upset that they sold a bunch of product. I fucking told you it was an accident. I told you that they, they did not plan it, the How design like no that. How did no one look at that box? How did no, no one look at that popcorn bucket and think that? I'm telling you, the only way that, would, that, only way that happened, it's my guess, is women designed it because... If a guy, if a, if, a guy, if a guy was in that design team, he'd be like, "Guys, that looks like a flashlight. <laughs> it looks like you could fuck that." But woman, a woman wouldn't think of that. Maybe <laughs> they wouldn't look at an object and be like, "Can I fuck that?" <laughs> I mean, no. I mean, I'm sure there are girls that. I'm saying, I'm just saying, I don't think there's a guy on that design team. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying, if, if there was a guy on the team, he'd be like, "Guys, it's looking a little <laughs> bit like something you could stick your dick in." <laughs> <laughs> and that would. Lo and behold. <laughs> Twitter, as soon as it got announced, I, dude, that was such a funny day when the dude popcorn bucket got released online, the photo of it. 
<laughs> oh my god. That's my guess. And I knew I knew it was an accident. But it makes no sense. Like you sold a bunch of product. It was an insanely it's, successful it's marketing weird, campaign. Yeah. It's weird that they're upset about There's it. There's never been a popcorn bucket so popular. Never. I can't think of it in my in my life because they used to be popular back in the day. But in our lifetime, I can't think of a popcorn bucket that's been that popular that's been part of pop culture. And it got Dune trending. You got it trending. Sure. It got people to your theater. Yeah, definitely. Not only that's people like, were taking photos with your popcorn bucket. Like not only did like the goal of popcorn bucket is to sell product in the theater, but you got people to go to your theater probably to get to see the popcorn bucket in person. Yes. People were photographing selfies with this popcorn bucket. So when that, has that ever happened? That popcorn bucket not only sold merch, but it sold tickets. They should have put that on the red carpet tour. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> should have wheeled that thing around. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably going to be a porn parody of the dude popcorn bucket. <laughs> oh my god! I just gave someone an idea. <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't think there was a guy on the design team. Probably not. I don't think so. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> yeah, a guy would be like, guys, yeah, you guy. can fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like something you can fuck. Guys, that's a 12 inch hole. And the woman, the, the woman on the, the woman designers were like, no, it looks just like the teeth. Look, the, look it's great. We, you, you reach your hand inside this hole and you, it's you genius. pull the popcorn out. And then the guy's like, you can reach something else in there. <laughs> 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 it's a funny theory. All right, let's talk about Transformers 1, which is not a horror movie. Not a horror movie, but we they got the first trailer at CinemaCon. And it's an origin story of Optimus Prime and Megatron. It's baby Optimus Prime. <laughs> as <laughs> It's their origins as worker friends before learning how to transform all in breathtaking animation. Looking forward to see this teaser. Best buds. Best buds. H- who's going to betray who? People, let me tell you about this my gonna best friend. There's going to be betrayal. The, this movie's going to be end with them as mortal enemies. It'll probably be sort of like a Dumbledore Grindelwald route where Megatron wants like they both want the other ones. No, they, <laughs> Megatron's gonna go for power, and Optimus can be like, "No, we have to be good people, <laughs> good boys." Or they could go both go for the Elder Wand. We are no, no. Well, apparently it's cool. It's got great animation. Hemsworth is, I believe, Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime yeah. with an Australian accent. <laughs> <laughs> He's Optimus Prime. Yeah. I believe so. Oh, that's interesting. He's younger, so you don't have to use the same voice as the old other as the it's gonna be, If he has an Aussie accent, I'll be. It'll be pretty. Not have an Aussie accent. You never know. I I'm mean, o- I'm Optimus Prime. <laughs> Optimus Prime. <laughs> Optimus Prime, mate. All of our Australian ac- <laughs> listeners are just leaving right now. Sorry. That's got, got any veggie, mate? <laughs> <laughs> Autobots assemble. Vegemite's best with butter. <laughs> I don't even know what you just said. Vegemite. Yeah, Vegemite. Oh, Vegemite. Yeah. That's what it's called, Vegemite. Anyways, we got our first look at Sebastian Stan in his upcoming film, The Apprentice, where he'll be playing Donald Trump. And the uh, still looks really good. Yeah. So we've seen some, some behind it's the scenes. It's him images. in the 80s. It's him. It's Trump, Trump in the 80s, and the image is Sebastian Stan in the back of a limo with a car phone, or portable, or I think an early cell phone. And Jeremy Strong's in there, too. Yeah. So, image looks cool. Very intrigued by this. A lot of potential. Film. He looks like him. Yeah, he pulls it off. Look, looks like him. I'm very curious about the what the impression is going to be like and what the tone is going to be like. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, they don't go too far, but um, it could be an interesting movie. Could be. We'll see. Speaking of interesting, scary movie, which has three hysterical films in the franchise: one, two, and three. It's so pretty funny. good too. It's a, it's yeah. well, actually I wouldn't say it's pretty good. No, it's, it's a, no, it's not have same, the same thing as not the other same ones. level. Yeah. One, two, and three are great. Yeah. They're doing a reboot of the series. I think this is something that is pretty good for a reboot. Like, why not? They're all just fun movies. Yeah, and it's been a while since one's come out, and there's been so many horror films. I wonder if you had to guess what scary movie, what movies do you think they'll go that's, after? No, that's a great point, because it's been a while. Um, definitely I, Hereditary, Midsummer. I think they'll go for Get Out. I think they'll go for... This could be like a resurgence, because horror is so big right yeah, now. Yeah, but they can do stuff that's... I mean, Get Out's 2018, right? Yeah, I think you talk to me. Yeah, they could do talk to me, but they'll probably like make fun of A24. Yeah. But I feel like Get Out will be one of the main ones. I think Hereditary and Midsummer will be a couple to go yeah, after. Yeah, like a little bit like some But they have 10 it. years of good horror movies to, to, to make fun of. Yeah, and they, they don't do, it doesn't have to be the whole plot, but there's sometimes just a scene about a movie, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm curious what movies they will select. I think there's a lot of potential to get back into that franchise. There's so much to make fun of. Yeah. 
And it also, the reason why they stopped making them was because they made so many. They made some bad ones. Yeah. And the other the other spoof movies were just terrible that were coming out around that time. So it was just the quality made people uninterested in, in the uh, idea of that kind of film. But spoof movies are great if they work. Heck yeah! All right. <clears throat> We have a new David Cronenberg coming out, everybody, called The Shrouds. We got our first image at it, and this is going to be exciting. It's premiering at the Cannes Film Festival. It'll be released theatrically in September 2024. Cool. And the cast includes Vincent Castle, nice. Diane Kruger, nice. and Guy Pierce. Uh, I thought you were going to say Guy Fieri. <laughs> <laughs> the premise of this film is not cooking. <laughs> But Castle plays Karsh, a grieving widower, who builds an innovative device to help people connect with the dead. Sign me up. Let's sounds sounds very Cronenberg. Let's go. Let's do it. All right, next up, we have an update on the 20 Years Later trilogy. They are selecting directors 28 for— 28 Years Later. 28 Years Later trilogy. Danny Boyle will be making the first film as director, and then Nia DaCosta— has actually been tapped to direct the second film. She most recently did Captain Marvel for Mar- for Disney. No, she did the Marvels. The Marvels. Sorry, I meant the I meant the Marvels. She did the Marvels, yes. and before that, she did Candyman. Candyman. The Candyman remake. Yes. Correct, Amundo. We got some high and low news that I don't know how I feel about. So Spike Lee <laughs> obviously is remaking High and Low, yes. and Denzel Washington will star, and they also just cast Ice Spice. Do you know who Ice Spice is, Anthony? She's a singer. Pop star, yeah. Yes. She's a rapper. She's got the curly hair. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I've, I've seen images of her. So Ice Spice has just been cast in Spike Lee's remake of High and Low, starring Denzel Washington. Who's the other actor that got cast alongside Denzel? I can't remember. Oh, um, someone, yeah, last week. I can't remember. It escapes me. I cannot put this together. Me either. Well, I mean, he wouldn't cast someone if they, they couldn't pull off the job. I'm sure he auditioned her. Yeah, I'm sure she did. I'm sure he did too. Yeah. Maybe it's, yeah, we'll see. Maybe she's great. I'm just, I didn't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm curious what this movie's going to be like. We shall see. But she's insanely popular. So maybe it was a studio decision too. Jeffrey Wright. Jeffrey Wright. That's right. Jeffrey Wright, Denzel Washington, Ice Spice having cast in High and Low. Women's shoes. And <laughs> <laughs> he's referencing Wolf of Wall Street, which is a reference of what the original movie in the protagonist's job is. He makes women's shoes. Women's shoes. Women's shoes. All right, next up, we have an update on Ballerina, the upcoming John Wick spinoff starring Anna de Armas. Keanu Reeves officially has returned as John Wick. The first trailer was shown at CinemaCon and includes a ton of sword action sequences featuring Anna de Armas and a glimpse of Norman Reedus. So lots of sword play in this one. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm back. That was pretty good. Thanks. That was not bad. I oh, appreciate it. Yeah. Well done. Flight Risk is a new movie coming out. You're a flight risk. Well, it's not like I committed a crime. It's still a risk. What does that even mean? You know. I don't. Explain it. <laughs> so, all right. So this Flight Risk is a new Mark Wahlberg movie that Mel Gibson's making. And it, the synopsis is kind of funny, like unnecessary dig at the main character. So this is the synopsis. Mark Wahlberg was, will star as a balding man in Mel Gibson's Flight Risk, where the, his character attempts to complete a hit on a small plane. He's a balding hitman. So is, okay, balding hitman, I'm sorry. Is balding part of the plot? Like, so, <laughs> why put that in? So it's a fucking mean way to describe the movie. <laughs> it's a balding hitman. It's just like a balding hitman. What the hell? Unless it's relevant to the plot, maybe it's like the character's self conscious about it or something. Um, maybe it shows the tone of the movie of being comedic. Yeah, maybe. Instead of it's not just a hitman, it's a a balding hitman. Yeah, it's, which, it's, it's, I don't know. It's kind of funny. That's a weird thing to put in the synopsis. Yeah. All right, next up, In the Gray has been announced as Guy Ritchie's next film, and follows a group who operate in the middle of criminality and the law. Henry Cavill will be returning to star in this film with Guy Ritchie, their third collaboration together. Jack Gyllenhaal, Aitza Gonzalez, and Rosamund Pike have also been cast in the film. This is going to be cool. Is Guy Ritchie the busiest director in Hollywood? Dude never stops. Dude makes a movie every fucking year. Yeah. It's insane. Sometimes he makes two a year. This is crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Can't I love stop, it. Can't stop, won't stop. Yeah. He's and he's just... producing the, the Gentleman series. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It's the hardest working guy in Hollywood. Up there. One of them out there. 
Very cool. So, Blair Witch is going to be a new movie at Blumhouse. I don't know if it's going to be a reboot. It just seems like a new... They just are saying it's a new Blair Witch film at Blumhouse. Probably just a, a contemporary sequel or something. A legacy sequel. I doubt that. Probably. There's no way that's what it is. I wonder if it'll be rated R, though, because they are big on the PG-13 horror. I doubt that. I don't think the first one was rated R. Yeah, nothing scary happens. Yeah. It's just some lady that's drooling. Screaming in the forest. Yeah. It's pretty <laughs> drooling nose, like water coming out of her nose. Dripping. <laughs> Dripping. She's leaking. She's not drooling. How would you describe it? She's leaking. <laughs> leaking from her nose. She had a runny nose, yeah. It was very runny. Well, she's crying. <laughs> drooling. She's le- leaking. Um, Sp- scary movie spoofed that really well, by yeah, the way. Yeah. Scary movie, too. With Gail Weatherstorm. Yeah. Gale Gale the other one. Yeah. Gale, Gale, no, the, the yeah. character yeah, 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 is Gail yeah. Thunderstorm, <laughs> and she's in the woods. <laughs> Gail Swallows. Gail Swallows. <laughs> I said, never disturb me when I'm cleaning my room. <laughs> hey, Sydney. <laughs> smells like shit in here. I pooped my pants. <laughs> Good night, Sydney. <laughs> 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 All right, our final bit of news. Uh, Linda Hamilton, in an interview, updated fans on maybe she if she would ever return to the Terminator series. And she said after Dark Fate, she has no intention to ever act in a Terminator film. Once again, she wasn't very happy with that movie and how it turned out. She had a good time on set, but she is officially done with the Terminator franchise. I mean, they got to they gotta stop having these older actors being in the franchises they did 40 years ago because yeah. she's 67 arnold's like 72 like these <laughs> if they show up in another terminator movie i'm gonna be like this is not working anymore <laughs> it's not working anymore we gotta stop guys <laughs> he's too old to be the terminator he's too old like aren't his gears getting fucked up <laughs> <laughs> the or T-800, would they not be getting the T-800 up? does not rust like do they not deteriorate there's no way those deteriorate yeah so like sure it would make sense because he, he's too old yeah he's a little too old getting too old for this shit because so, I love these franchises and they're, they've been going on so long but sometimes they're a little too old for the roles Tom's be- still doing it really well but yeah. <laughs> sometimes it just doesn't work not everyone's Tom Cruise that film Dark Fate was okay but it was just like it was it was good, but it wasn't like, oh my god, it's so good. We need to keep going with this franchise. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's all we have for movie news this week. Lots of cool stuff coming out of CinemaCon. A shit ton. Yeah. A shit ton. Um. Yeah. We were so happy to hear all this new stuff. Lots of cool news. Uh, what was your favorite bit of news from CinemaCon? I'd say for me, it's probably the Gladiator Two stuff. Oh, definitely. As well as the Edgar Wright news, I think is massive. It's so cool because I, I love his movies so much and he's such a terrific filmmaker and I think it's he's a really great pick for The Running Man I think it's awesome and I'm looking forward to anything that he does hell yeah alright everybody thank you so much for tuning in to Raiders of the Lost Podcast be sure to become a patron today at patreon.com slash Raiders of the Lost Podcast leave those 5 star ratings and reviews on Apple and Spotify and stay tuned for more see you next time Thank you for watching Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button as well, notifications for sure. Listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everywhere you can listen to podcasts. And be sure to check out this other content we have on our YouTube channel.